Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Abby Ramos Stanitz. There you go. Abby, get it? See, I got even theme music. music. Oh yeah, there's theme music and everything. I actually yeah. was telling Abby before we got on the podcast that everything is on the opposite side. So I have to like use, so I'm actually, my I'm right-handed, but I'm using my right hand, but I'm so used to hitting my soundboard on the left, right? Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, we- <laughs> We think you can do it. We believe in you. All right, all right let's do this. Okay, so Abby, uh, Abby and I actually connected. Um, sh- let's be honest, you snuck into a session that yes. I was doing for administrators. And we're going to talk about that on our other podcast. But you actually made a video on TikTok talking about some of the stuff. I connected with you and I just absolutely um, love the stuff you do on TikTok. I find it really, really interesting. And I can't wait to talk to you more about that because uh, I know there's a lot of teachers using TikTok, but I find that you're using it um in a really interesting and unique way that's really uplifting and really helpful to other educators so i'm really excited to talk to you more about that so i don't i don't know if that was the intent when you started it but (laughs) happening right now so abby we um we talked about these three questions um before and you said you might go in a little bit of different direction so i'm I'm curious what you're gonna say so um the first question is who is a teacher that inspired you and and why um, yeah, so I know that this is where you're supposed to like insert an amazing teacher's name and say like that was the minute I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but I had a kind of an opposite experience. Um, I moved a lot and I was just never really had a chance for teachers to get to know me. I, I maybe I don't know, and so I had a lot of experiences where I um, I kind of became a teacher in spite of other teachers. So right. I guess I would say that it was inspirational to see people, you know, like you know, assume the worst of me, assume that like, you know, I wasn't going to really amount to anything or like give me really low expectations. I mean, there were times when people tried to keep me out of upper level classes because they didn't think I could do it and things like that. So I try to always be the teacher now that really believes in my students, no matter, you know, what they scored or where they came from or if their parents showed up for meet the teacher night or whatever. So um, I know. Yeah. It's it's interesting because you know, I, you and I talk. I'm a big basketball fan. And I feel like it's kind of like a Michael Jordan story. Like you, <laughs> yeah. you just have this like spite that like I was benched you know, and now <laughs> excelled you to. Well, the, the interesting thing. So you you know I'm I'm from Canada. There is actually a TV show. I, I doubt you know it. It's not like Degrassi or anything that's like a cult hit or anything like that. Are you, do you even know Degrassi? Do you know I don't. That? I'm sorry. I don't know what this. Degra- okay, <laughs> so <laughs> after the podcast, look up Degrassi because okay. that. You know who Drake is, right? Oh yeah, I love yeah, Drake. Drake. Drake got his start on Degrassi. It was like a. Oh team. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But there's a show called The Littlest Hobo, and uh, The Littlest Hobo actually like it was a German Shepherd, and he'd go from town to town, and basically he would go to these places just for a little while, and he would make that place better. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of every episode, you would see him like wagging his tail, and they're like, "Where's the, where's that dog going?" <laughs> right? And it's like. <laughs> And it's kind of interesting. So when you're like talking about that, you you it's kind of like even when you are, you know, have a little bit amount of time, you can make a positive impact. And I think it's like the opposite, not someone just coming in. But like when you see kids for like a, a, a little bit of amount of time, mm-hmm. yep. those memories stick with kids, right? Those memories stick with how you interacted. And not everyone is, you know, at the same place for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as you as you shared, it can stick with you. and not everyone takes that and excels because of it. Sometimes it can hold you back. Oftentimes, I would think, yeah. yeah. I try so, to keep that in mind with my transient students, you know, that are here a few minutes. I mean, I've heard teachers say like, oh, you know, they're not going to count for us or whatever. And I just think like, no, you know, every kid's going to get my full attention, even if I only see them for two months or whatever. So typically what I do is I after, okay. I, uh, after we get the shout out, I do one of these. <laughs> Right, but this now time, a great concert. But this time I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's, sorry. That's no, okay. That's it's good. I think it's good to hear those stories too, right? Like I don't think everything is like everyone was inspired, right? Like I, I remember yeah. asking, I remember asking, um, something about like a similar question years ago on Twitter, and I remember one specific person saying, like, I had a teacher that basically said she would never believe in me. And that's why I'm a teacher today to make sure that I prove her wrong and be the opposite. So uh, I, I do find it inspiring when we take some of that stuff and, you know, we make something good out of it. 
All right. So second question. Now I, I do know you have someone you have in mind for this one. Yes. You think of an administrator. Yes. Uh, who is someone you think of and why? Um, so mine is actually from my teaching career. And I would have to say I had a principal named Matt Warnock. Um, and I don't, I'm not even sure. I don't think he's a principal anymore, but he was really wonderful and that he just let his teachers um, like be who they needed to be. Like we would come to him and we'd say, hey, this benchmark feels, you know, like, you know, totally, um, you know, not necessary. And we want to do this instead. Or we really feel like we need to go out into the community and deliver books door to door. And he would be like, let's make it happen. What can we do to make it happen? And I just, I mean, I feel like it made all of the teachers better because we were able to blossom into these, you know, teachers that we are now and like be experimental. You know, it was great for the community. It was great for the kids. And I mean, if I were to ever, which I, you have not convinced me, if I were to ever be an administrator, that's exactly the type of administrator that I want to be. Somebody just empowers like the teachers and the kids and kind of gets out of the way sometimes. So no offense. Sorry. Sorry yeah, no, I, no I, th I think that's, I think that's actually quite important. There's, um, uh, it's basically, I think it's like Steve Jobs is a tribute to this quote is, mm -hmm. is like, my job is to like hire really great people and then kind of get out of their way. Like that's why you actually yeah. hire really great people. And there's a, there's a meme that I used to share. It's all over the internet. And it was, it was talking about basically, uh, internet filters and like how basically so much was like blocked off from classrooms and like yeah. teachers could use YouTube and stuff like that. Now I know like a lot of that has changed. There's some still stuff that's probably still yeah. blocked in many schools. And it was like, it just said, dear teachers, we trust you with children, but not the internet side. Yeah. Right. Exactly and kind of, right. And it's kind of like funny to saying like, Hey, we trust you with, you know, kids that are precious, but like, you gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. Mm -hmm. And that micromanaging doesn't actually, and to be honest with you, what I think a lot of times what it leads to is the micromanaging of the kids. Oh, right? absolutely. So and it takes a lot of the professionalism out of the job. Like I'm actually pretty good at what I do. It's a science. Right. We've learned how to do this. Trust me to do it. So and then I've worked at places where they had a big old lock on the supply cabinet because I can't be trusted with <laughs> file folders, I guess, you know, <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. much less the internet. So, you know, no, we that actually, when you said that we got, um, I remember years ago, we got a smart board and I know it's oh, like, yeah. you know, we got a smart board and basically I, I remember asking to use it and it's like, you can't use it. I'm like, <laughs> why did we get it? And they're like, do you know how much this thing costs? I'm like, yeah. I, okay, <laughs> I get that. But if it costs a bunch of money and we don't want to use it because we're so worried about breaking it, maybe mm -hmm. we should have bought it. Like yeah. what's the point? So, so it was, uh, what's the name again? Cause I got to do the shout out horn. Oh, Matt Warnock. Yeah. Matt Warnock. Mm -hmm. If you're listening. <laughs> All right. And maybe Abby will be following your footsteps one day. And then we'll, 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 when that happens, uh, you promise you can come back on the podcast and this is going to be, I will. I'll be like, George, you Told you were right. That's the, I'm gonna, I already got the, title <laughs> the, the podcast. All right. Okay. So last question. When you, okay. I know that you're a very accomplished teacher. Um, you share some really incredible ideas that I'm so excited to talk about um, on, on the, the next podcast on TikTok and I'm sure in other places too, but that's just where I follow you. Um, but I'm sure there's things you look back on at the beginning of your career where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I used to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you go back to your first year teacher self, uh, what advice would you would you would you actually share? Um, okay, so I have probably a big piece that I've learned over the years, and then one that's just practical. Um, the first one would be um, to not. Well, I did this project. I thought it was so just. I mean, I was just so proud of myself that I'd invented this project, and it was like a my world project where they had to have like a poster and you know put your family tree on it and where you're from and your name and where what your name means. And in my mind, I was like, oh my God, I'm so multicultural. I'm so proud of myself. Like, this is going to be great. And I had a bunch of kids not turn it in at all. And then I, um, I would never do that project now. And I get it now. I spoke to some of the kids and through all of my, like trying to learn about culturally relevant teaching, I found that like, that was really insensitive, you know, like, because some people do have this, you know, beautiful lineage and it's up on their wall, but a lot of people don't, right. And don't necessarily want it on a poster board hung on the wall, like, who did I think I was, you know, so first year teachers, I would say, just think about what you're asking your kids to share with you. And if they've actually, you've actually earned that trust. And if it's something that they want publicized everywhere, you know, like your greatest fear or the worst thing that ever happened to you, we used to have kids write about that kind of stuff and then put it on the wall or something, or, you know, share it with a partner and revise. I just think sometimes we assume 
that kids owe us their story and they don't necessarily until we've earned it. So that's my number one. And then my second one would be to not wear heels. My first year, I tried to wear heels every day. I tried and I was just like hobbling around, like could like barely get around to every desk. And I mean, I was not active monitoring because I could not move my feet. And so now I'm just in my vans pretty much every day. So. Just I, get feel, I feel like those two pieces of advice yeah. are like on very opposite sides of the spectrum. <laughs> right. That somebody, right. somebody got something out of their yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. so um, right. practical and theoretical, I yeah. guess. So uh, do not wear heels. Got do it. Do okay. not wear heels. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love I love that. Um, Four inches, big, t- tall heels. I mean, they were <laughs> real heels. They weren't like sensible heels. So. <laughs> The the story, you know, like, you know, I love that you, what you said is, you know, kids don't actually owe you their story. Right? No. That is, that is something that is earned. And um, I, I think it, I think sometimes like I, I went right back to my childhood. I was, I think I struggled with this. Uh, so I'm very proud we, of Greek heritage. I like, guess something mm-hmm. I'm very proud of. Um, I was actually right before we're recording this on opening day of NFL. And uh, there was actually uh, a Greek guy signed with the Chiefs. I was like so excited about it, right? And it's it was interesting because as a kid, it was probably the most em- thing I was the most embarrassed about. And I feel like it was like kind of pushed that we were like supposed to share those things, and I wasn't ready because it made me feel so different. Yeah, and I feel like if I would have had some like time, and I and I understand like same as you. To be honest, with you there's positive intent behind it. I don't think anyone's trying. Oh, yeah. to- I you thought know, I was doing a, a yeah, good totally. work here. But, yeah. but I think that's like a really good consideration is that, you know, um, people have to kind of earn your trust that they don't feel like there's something wrong with them if they're different, their experience, their upbringing mm-hmm. is different. Like I, like my biggest regret as a, as a human being is that I cannot speak Greek. Like it bothers me. And I remember my mom would speak to me in Greek and I'm like, don't, don't talk to me in Greek. Like do not talk to me in Greek because it's embarrassing. And now I, you know, and that's something because I was, you know, was yeah. felt that was like really kind of pushed on me and stuff like that too. So I, I think that's, I think both are very good advice. The other <laughs> one or partial. Too. Be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, Abby, I'm so excited to talk to you. I love, um, like I said, uh, we actually have uh, Abby's TikTok listed down in the comments. Now <laughs> you just gave a face. I don't know if you wanted. Yeah. So is it? Um, it's gonna be yeah it's yeah, okay. like you don't see yeah. it it will be there and so okay. make sure you connect with abby um i've learned a lot from you and I'm, I'm sure people are gonna just love the stuff you're sharing i can't wait to talk to you more so thanks to abby for being on the podcast thanks everyone for listening there you go.